Good morning all, it's post bag and today I think I'll just pick them randomly out of the bin. I won't try to theme this in anyway. So here's the first one and it is... Oh, a, uh, ooh, what's that called? Digital caliper. Uh, it's a carbon fiber composites digital caliper. Uh, ROHS, reduction of hazardous substances is that? Uh, yeah, that looks quite nice actually. Let's uh, switch on. Oh, it won't switch on. This isn't another one of these things where they don't put a battery in, is it? That's really annoying. This looks like it's not metal. That looks like it's uh, plastic. In fact, it's pretty much all plastic apart from this insert. Oh, even that looks like it might be plastic. I'm sure they'll um, say that that's carbon fiber, not actually plastic. But yeah, it's all basically plastic. Uh, that's interesting. The battery is an LR44, SR44, or a CR20323 volts. You can use either, it would seem. That's rather unusual. Hmm, I seem to have used all my AG13 or LR44s. Uh, oh, well, I could use the uh, CR2032 option then, couldn't I? Uh, or maybe not, because that is strictly an LR44 and on the back it says uh, SR44, LR44. There's no mention of CR2032. Now fortunately when I was in the pound shop the other day I bought one of these which has a couple of these um, 12 volt uh, batteries and uh, an N type which is a 1.5 volt cell but it also has two LR44 so I do have them. Right it's in uh, millimeters but we've also got inches there as well um, if you switch it off and then move it it switches itself on which is pretty brilliant um, I've zeroed it out so I don't need to do that again and I've sort of given it all these sort of jerky movements and it doesn't seem to miss a beat it always seems to head right back to zero at zero which is pretty good so what do I have that's a known diameter? Well, how about an 18650? Uh, I've got one here actually that doesn't have its wrapper, so I could see whether that's uh, exactly 18. Of course, I've no way of knowing whether it's exactly 18. Let's try it. Right, so stick that around there. 18.2, or oh, 18.1 if I push it a bit. Yeah, that's pretty good. 18.2, so I'm guessing that is about 18.2. I mean, uh, I can't really argue with it, can I? So if I stick the edge of the black plastic on exactly 100 millimeters, it's actually reading high 100.4. But then if I return it to the zero position, it looks like um, this sticker, this stick on ruler hasn't been exactly laid at the right position zero. Uh, because that's zero and it measures zero so I think this printed rule is only useful as a rough guide but the uh, electronic rule looks really very accurate indeed Now I don't know how this works and um, there doesn't seem to be any sort of graticule that it's reading so I assume it's just uh, rolling a little rubber roller um, along something on the back there I assume that's how it works uh, now, as well as measuring the outside diameter of things like this 18650, oh, which seems to be exactly, actually it might be different, um, yeah, it's, I think it's different uh, widths down the length of the barrel. Uh, you can also measure the internal diameter of things with these top two things like that. So just pull that out and measure the internal diameter of something like that. Uh, so this seems pretty good. Um, I don't think it was uh, terribly expensive. Let's take a look. Actually, perhaps it isn't a, a little rubber roller because it says here the measuring system is a non-contact linear cap measuring system, whatever that is. Oh, and uh, just one other thing. It's got, of course, the uh, depth measuring gauge at the end there so you can measure the depth of, I don't know, tire tread or something using that. So this is uh, the digital LCD electronic carbon fiber vernier caliper. Now it says plus five volt micro USB EU plug charger. I don't have uh, a five volt EU plug charger. I think it's this thing here. Uh, in the selection box, now you may not be able to see, see these selection items, 
Uh, the LCD vernier is actually out of stock, so I can't uh, show the price there, but I think it's $4.52. Um, so let's show the caliper there. Uh, $4.52 then, free shipping, and this came from CZB672-1960. Right, next one, randomly selected module adapter. Let's see which module this is. Okay, unwrap it, and it's a little kit. Yeah, so this kit is a one kilohertz sine wave generator. And uh, it's interesting because one of the components in here is rather unusual. <laughs> and there's also a hair in there. Um, but this is actually a light bulb. It's a, a lamp, 12 volts, 40 milliamps. And I suppose they're using the sort of non-linearity, the, the variable resistance of, of this bulb at its different temperatures to generate the curve of the sine wave. It's a really unusual circuit. Right, let's try this little 12 volt bulb on uh, 9 volts. Nickel metal hydride, 9 volt. And uh, yeah, that lights up. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's going dim instantly. Why is that? Oh, it's probably because this battery is flat. Great. Right, let's try this one. Yeah, so that... Oh, that one looks flat as well. All my 9 volt batteries are flat. But yeah, that's a little 12 volt lamp. So let's... um. I think the circuit for this is probably on the eBay listing. So this is it. It's a sine wave audio signal generator preamplifier, audio signal source tester kit, uh, $3.98 free shipping. And this one I got from Kiss Buyer. Now here's the uh, board and you can see there the, uh, the lamp soldered into the board. Now we've also got photos of an oscilloscope trace, so there's uh, a fairly nice clean looking sine wave, and we've also got the uh, circuit diagram, and you can see there on the right hand side that uh, we've got LP, that's the lamp, it's the circle with the cross through it, and then also they've got a close up of the PCB. Now there's another sine wave generating circuit which I've seen in the Vocoder project, uh, so I'll just go scroll down to that and uh, it's this one it's a little test circuit which I think the idea is you build it and you can use it to uh, use as an input to test the vocoder but they're generating a sine wave here using two on uh, two op amps there's a potentiometer here to vary the frequency that's a log pot and then they're using these um, rows of diodes there are five diodes going in one direction and five diodes going in the other direction, they're all 1N4148, and that generates a sine wave. You can see on the output here, 2 volt RMS sine wave. Uh, circuit diagram of the 100 hertz to 7 kilohertz test oscillator. So that's a really unusual circuit for a sine wave generator. And uh, another sine wave generator is this thing. It's the Royer oscillator, which I bought because I wanted to... Um, Put a lithium battery on the input and then have this thing generate this this is also an inverter it's a sort of step up ac inverter of course it generates um well, it's got these two transistors which generate some sort of oscillation that then goes through a transformer and of course the the wave shape that goes best through a transformer is a sine wave so out of here you get a sine wave so another type of uh, sine wave generator Right, let's do another one. This one is just described as an electronic module. Let's see what it is. That's taped up. Right, this one is a little board and a, a header plug. And um, it's the INA, oh, something I can't remember, but it's a three channel uh, current sensor, so ammeter. So it's a bit like the INA219, but it's got three channels, which I thought was quite intriguing. So you may remember that recently I built these uh, little ammeters with a, an Arduino uh, Pro Mini and a little tiny OLED, the 128x32 pixel OLED. And these are the INA219 modules, which are single channel current measuring uh, devices. Now I wanted to put these I think I built two, but uh, I could build three. And the idea was to measure the current flowing into and out of these lithium cells because these 
can measure current flowing in both directions. So when I saw this that has three channels of measurement, I thought, well, that's handy. That could sit there, independently measure the current flowing into and out of each of these three cells. I thought that'd be quite handy, but I'm not sure whether there's actually um, an Arduino library for this chip. Now, interestingly with this, all you get is the board um, and the short pin header, which goes um, up across the top there. You don't get any of these uh, high current connectors. Um, so this, I think, is I squared C, uh, VS ground, SCL, SDA, PV, not sure what that is, Cry, War, and TC. <laughs> no, I don't know what any of those are. Uh, ground and channel one, two, and three. And here we have ground, power, and VPU. Hmm, have to do some reading on this, I think. Uh, three of these 100 milliohm resistors, so tenth of an ohm resistors, and there are five LEDs here, each with a little current limiting resistor. So lots of status information coming out of this thing. Not sure what it is. Uh, so it's possible that until I can find uh, a library for this INA3221, it's likely to sit in a box unused, and I'll probably just carry on using the INA219s. And on eBay, this one is INA3221, triple channel, I squared C, shunt current voltage monitor module. Um, I think that means replaces the INA219. Well, it doesn't really replace the INA219, but it's an alternative uh, sensor. This one is $7.99, free shipping. And this one I got from World Chips. Right, so I'm just in uh, Arduino checking the library manager. Now, if I type INA2, I get the Adafruit INA219 library, and there's also this other one by John de Cristofaro. But if I type in INA3, uh, because this is the INA3221, I don't get anything. So certainly in the, mm, I don't know, registered libraries, there's no library for the INA3221. I could probably do a a wider search to see if there's anything uh, generally online, but uh, nothing in the library manager. Right, let's do one more. Uh, no, nothing written on the front of this. There is stuff written on the back, of course. Uh, these are little adapter boards for small outline 16-pin uh, surface mount chips to a sort of dual in-line format. Uh, really nice thick polythene's grip seal bag, so I'll be keeping that. Uh, let's close right in on these. Right, so on one side, we've got uh, the SOP16, so 16 pin small outline package. Now it says 1.27 millimeters. I presume it's 1.27 millimeters uh, between each pin. Now, would that be about right? Because it's 2.54 millimeters between these pins, which are at one tenth of an inch spacing. So, yes, that looks about right. And on the other side, we've got SSOP 16. So small, small outline or super small outline. I don't know. Uh, 16 pin chip, 0.65 millimeters between the pins on that side. So you get uh, an option to use both types. Now, one of the questions I wanted to know was what is the pitch between uh, this row and this row? In other words, what's the mill spacing across there. Is it uh, 300 mil, 600 mil, 500 mil? Let's take a look. So I've got a ruler here um, which has both centimeters and inches and it has 30 seconds, uh, 50ths, 20ths, but also tenths, which is quite unusual to find a ruler with tenths of an inch, but it's very, very handy for this sort of thing. So how many tenths is this? Right, so that is five tenths. And that's quite handy um, when you want to put that board uh, on a breadboard because it sits centrally there. It's two pins or two tenths wider, of course, than a 300 mils package, but that's going to sit nice and symmetrically centrally um, across a breadboard. Now, this, uh, these, of course, were bought for my 8-bit uh, breadboard computer. And the reason is because I could only get HCT138s in surface mount. So I thought it'd be quite fun to put the surface mount chip on one of these and then put this down on the breadboard. But I'm starting to think that it's not necessary because I'm going to be 
connecting the uh, 74HCT138 to the output of this RAM chip. Now this RAM says its inputs and its outputs are all TTL compatible, but of course CMOS outputs are compatible with TTL inputs. The difficulty comes when you have uh, TTL outputs trying to drive CMOS inputs. But since this is a CMOS RAM chip, then it's going to be able to drive a, a CMOS uh, logic chip. So I can use here a 74HC138. Uh, I don't need to use an HCT138. So it may end up that these never get used, but uh, maybe I'll play with them anyway and use the HCT138. But uh, I have also bought some HC138. So I might as well open this one um, as well while I'm at it because these are the HC138. So I'll just open that up. Uh, so yes, 10 pieces, uh, 74HC138. And of course, HC is much easier to find than HCT. And of course, I could find HC in standard dual inline package. Um, so yes, this is going to, this HC138 is going to be reading the outputs of the CMOS RAM. Um, I think that's right. Yes, that is right. Uh, so yes, I believe I can use just a regular HC directly off the back of this uh, CMOS. I'm using this Sony skinny dip uh, RAM package, which came in recently. I think I put that on a post bag. Um, so yeah, I think the uh, HC138 will be fine. I don't need the HCT. So on eBay, uh, the first item is 10 times SO16, SSOP16, TSSOP16, <laughs> Soik 16, MSOP 16, 2 DIP 16, that's dual in line package 16 pin adapter converter PC board. So 10 of these for $2.49, free shipping. And these came from, oh, Gazewa Zero. And the other item is this 10 pieces SN74HC138. Uh, now that's a three line to eight line. Decoder IC, uh, DIP IC, Texas Instruments, possibly new. So 10 of these, just $1.29, free shipping. These came from old favorite Alice 110 And so these are today's postbag items. And uh, as usual, huge thanks to uh, Patreon supporters uh, who help immeasurably with uh, this postbag feature. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my stuff. And this uh, here is my face. And that's the button to subscribe to my channel. Cheerio.